torquey motor. You can feel it. This is the first automatic that was faster than a manual. Nobody believed it in the mm -hmm. day. Well, how can it shift faster than a, than a human could? But it really did. And I mean, these things, they don't cast iron, these things take such a beating, aren't they? They're bomb proof. I don't know if they're still cast iron up to this point. They were in the mid 60s, early 60s. Yeah, just looking down that hood scoop and wonderful driving car. It's got rattles and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's what you're paying for. <laughs> this is luxury performance. Yeah. From the episode of Jay Leno's Garage, today we're visited by true muscle car royalty. When you think of muscle cars, if there's a holy grail, it probably has to be this, the 1970 Hemi Cuda, 426 Hemi, convertible, plum crazy, and the other cool part is it is an all original car. I mean, it's pretty, pretty amazing automobile. This is the one everybody has lusted after their multi-million dollar cars. They've just gone crazy. And there was a guy who was ahead of this market a long time ago and started one of the biggest auction companies in the world. We've all watched him on TV. You know, uh, Barrett Jackson Austin. Please welcome Craig Jackson. Craig, good to see you, my friend. Well, thank you, Jay. We have I'm auction honored. royalty and car royalty. You're the guy that really has made it sort of like the Super Bowl. I know. I watch it. I, I don't know anybody that doesn't watch it. It's not a car person. There's an excitement to it. You've brought a lot of Vegas style and the cars move quickly. It's really a fun program to watch. It's a, it's a great way to sort of, it's like dream television. You go, oh my God, I haven't seen one of those in years. So congratulations well, on thank all your you. success. Yeah, every two minutes, it's a different drama. We, we sell the cars at all no reserve, which is very unique, but we also, vet the cars as we do the process, whether it's a numbers matching car or whether it's a resto mod. It's just, when we have 40% new people coming in, we want them to feel comfortable. And I think that comes from watching us on TV for all these years. We want to educate people so they make the right choice. Yeah, and we've had presidents and heads of yeah. state and all kinds of people. Thank to you, Jay. Yes, that was a great moment with George W. up on the auction We uh, auctioned off a uh, Corvette. Corvette and uh, the, the president was there when it, it was a lot of fun. We yeah. had a, we had a good time. Well, it, it really is sort of the Super Bowl of car events. I mean, it, 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 it there's such a spectacle to it. it. It's so much fun to watch people just get all worked up and excited because that's that's what auctions do. Yep. And your guys do a great job. <laughs> this guy's yelling. At I'm like, well, like, what are they saying? I don't know what they're saying. But they're go, 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 go. Well, You're hired. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's a lot of fun. Now, this is your own personal car, correct? It is. When I grew up, my brother was 14 years older than me. So growing up, he raced cars and he drag raced cars. So my youth was spent going to Beeline Dragway when he would drag race or Stardust or Riverside when he would road race. And I always loved the cars that his friends had. Right. And our street was all the Camaros and Hemi cars of that era. And when I started to get to the point where I could buy some cars. I sold my Dallahay, Fagoni Flashy Dallahay that I restored with my parents. And uh, that was 88, sold it for almost a million dollars. And I started buying muscle cars that I grew up with. And uh, this was the second car I bought. I bought this in 99. Hunted for a long time to find a Hemi Cuda convertible that just checked every box for me. And when I saw this one, it checked every box. And it's amazing how cheap they were back in the 80s, isn't they it? They were, you know, it looks, my dad, when I bought my first one, thought I was out of my mind. I bought a Camaro that was an ex-drag car. And he's like, what are you thinking? I go, think S.J. Duesenberg. Right, this right. is the S.J. Duesenberg yeah. of my generation. Yes, it's a new car to you, a used car, but to me, and Tom Barrett was the one who's like, I remember those in the parking lot. I go, well, yes. And people 50 years ago remember when Duesenbergs were in the parking lot. So it just keeps moving on as cars keep evolving. But this really was a pinnacle. The next year, 71, was the absolute last year of the Hemi, sort of where we are today, where they're ending production of the next generation Hemis. And uh, it's a pinnacle to the time of when the cars had these psychedelic colors on them and it was the pure 60s and everything was in excess and 
the biggest motor and the smallest car, and that's really what a muscle car is. And it was funny because it was a tough sell back in the day because the Hemi was $400 more than the 440. 440. And you know, well, I'm not spending 400, but $400 was really $4,000. Yeah, when, when you look at it. Yeah, when you figure it's almost, the Hemi option, I think, was almost a third the price of the car if you got the stripper, you know, and you mm -hmm. want a big motor in it. It's, it's, I remember I passed on a Shelby GT350 in the mid 80s for $600 because I had a little bit of rust. I said, well, I'll find another one. Yeah, and the next time I bought one, it was 60 grand. <laughs> it was like five or six years later. But they just went, they just went crazy. So uh, whenever people tell me, oh, you know, because every stockbroker, Wall Street guy, cars are a bad investment. You know, I watched a guy in Shark Tank say, they're a bad investment. Well, I got my McLaren, you got this. And these are multi-million dollar cars now. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Are, it are you is. as surprised as anybody by that? No, I... Sitting at the auction in 88, after I sold the Dallahay, I was sitting in my coach talking to a fellow collector, and he already had five of these put away. Wow. He goes, I would find a Hemi Cuda convertible. And uh, I went on a quest, found several, and uh, remember the guy that was helping me, uh, he'd bring me one. Ah, oh, it's great. I go, it's a column automatic with a bench seat. You right. know, he goes, Mind you, you're not in 1970. You can't order it one. So I right. went through and found all the cars they built, and I said, I want this car, and he hunted it down and found it. I'm not even going to ask you what you paid for it back then. I, I can't even remember now. But, but it was uh, a little over 100 grand, I think. Oh, it was even that much? Even Yeah, it was, because it came with all NOS parts. Right. But you really looked at the restoration of, of all the original parts, took as much as the buying the car to put the car to where it should be. Right. You know, this car was very nice car when it uh, came back from England. It's got a great story to it. So this is the only exported 1970 Hemi Cuda convertible ever made. And in the paperwork, it shows the car was shipped to England as a gift to the chairman of British Steel for helping them through the steel strike. And they gave him, I don't know if they gave or did a dollar deal, but it was a uh, gift to help, and it was fully optioned. Right. Now, it's also left-hand drive, so right. think of driving this around London back. Pretty low profile to be driving around uh, the streets of London. Yeah, and it's the right color, the plum crazy, the one everybody wants. Can we open the hood and take a look? Sure. So, one thing when you open the hood up, you see the massive Hemi, but it's all these tags on the side right. where it's got the export, it's got all the options. So, we call these cars either a one tag or a two tag car. Right. This is a three tag car, and the car was exported. So, it's a one off in some aspects. The neat story on this car is when I bought the car, it had this engine in it, which is a 1970 crate replacement engine. Right. The car was in a barn, and I got the pictures back then in England. Uh, it was already back to the States, but they showed me the whole story. What I did not know, the, the urban myth was that the engine was taken out when he was drag racing the car. And there's pictures of it on the drag strip back right. then. That's not the case. After we found the motor and started going back down through the owners talking to him, they took the motor out in 1974, put a 318 two barrel in it because of the oil embargo. They would wait in line forever to put fuel in it and about the time you got halfway home, right. you're already out of gas right, again. Right, right. So they put a, 280, uh, a 318 two barrel in it and drove it for several years, put this engine on an engine stand. And wow. the one of the gentlemen goes, well, I knew where the engine was, nobody asked me, but they wanted as much for it as the car. Uh, when he bought the car. So we reunited the engine. I have the engine. That is not the engine in it because I drive the car. So this is a 1970 crate engine, but I do have the original engine reunited. And it came with all the paperwork. It has two broadcast sheets, which are normally under the seats. It's fully documented on every aspect. And uh, it's one of my first collector cars that I put away and decided 
it's a car I love. Yeah. And that's why I brought it here to you today, because this car means something to me. No, it's great. It's great. And the number matching thing is something fairly new, isn't it? Yeah, you know, the Corvette guys started this whole numbers matching. On a Mopar or a Ford, it doesn't matter as much. Right. The fifth digit that's an R means it came with a Hemi. Right. On a General Motors car, it's all forensics of paperwork and stampings right. and broachings on the block and is it original car. If you look at our auction this year, we sold a Resto Mod 67 Corvette for a million dollars and a lot of numbers matching cars in the three to 400,000 range. Right. People want cars they can drive. Right. I, that's why I kept the non-numbers matching engine in it. So if I hit it and something happens, I'll fix it. Yeah, you know, like with Duesenbergs, engine swaps were fairly common because there'd be problems and I'm just, and, and nobody thought anything mm -hmm. about, oh, hey, get a new engine. It's the same engine. Yep. You know, but the idea that it's numbers matching, it just, that's something I think came years later. It did. You know, back then with Duesenbergs, as you know, guys swap bodies, swap right, stuff all right. around. Yeah, that was yeah. the 40s and 50s. Well, boy, it just, it's a beautiful restoration. It's nicely done. Here. It was actually done not far from here, up in Chatworth. Oh, is that right? A guy that just specializes in these. Okay. Okay, I'll let you, I'll let you do it. Yeah, that clip's a little touchy down there. Do this without scratching the car. There we go. And of course, the shaker hood, which is a, a great idea. I don't know who thought that up, but it's a great idea. And it just sits there when it lopes. Yeah, but, yeah. You good. know, a lot of these muscle cars of the era, I've had almost all of the great cars. A Hemi really is a cool car. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it actually has the power because a lot of them, you have to put headers on them and do a lot to get past the smog right. equipment. Boss 9s, I've had right. several of those. This... This is in total stock configuration, and uh, it runs very well. I mean, the funny thing is uh, that back in the day when they produced these, they stopped building the Hemi because it was $5 an engine more to build than the 440. And, and to people's mind, the 440 was bigger, easier to manufacture, easier to work on, and made pretty much equal power. Yeah, these engines were basically built so that they could go out and race them. That's the reason why the Boss 9s were built, so that they could run them on the super speedways. And, and it's so different now. Like when you buy a Hellcat now, they tell you to race it. Yes. But back in the day, I remember when I have a 66 Hemi, and when it came out, you got a 90-day warranty, and they find out, found out you took it to a racetrack. That was void. Yep. You, I, I, yeah. If you burned rubber, you got caught burning rubber, oh, that, that's it. That's it. Yeah. So it's a whole now your world. Demon 170, which I ordered mine in this color. Oh, is that right? At the oh, cool. end of the era. Yeah, they tell you everything to do and how to configure it and when you can do the launch control and how to do the launch control. It's so funny to drive this and then drive. I've got a Demon 170. And, you know, it's like walking around with a rolled up sock in your pants. It's impressive, <laughs> but it really doesn't do anything when you get right there. I mean, you know, we, we did a thing, Tim Allen and I, we had some fun on our show. We got a, a 66, uh, 67 GTO, tri-power, everything, you know, convertible. We raced it against a Nissan Altima, just a four-door, and the Altima took it. It be just because more efficient, you mm -hmm. know, yeah, very funny, very funny. But GT, the GTO sounded faster, looked faster, everything, it just, it just wasn't faster. You know, now you look at the funny. times nowadays, yeah. but to sell a stock car nowadays that does in the eights, is just, oh, no. it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. And well, I remember reading in the Car and Driver, the 66 Belvedere Hemi, 0 to 6.4. Well, that's got to be a mistake. Because <laughs> back when I was, anything under 10 seconds was, oh my God, crazy. Oh yeah, Seriously. you had to have big slicks in the back. Yeah. And ladder bars. Oh and yeah, I take my Challenger out now. Some of the guys and women are putting on lipstick and Honda. Civic says they go past me, and I go, really? I'm, I'm not going that fast, you know. Yeah. But it feels it with the suspension and all yeah, uh, right. and the brakes. Uh, it, they it, they seem like you're going fast when you're in them. It is. It is true, you know, because we talked about this the other day. You know, when they came up with the highway, 65 miles speed limit, when they built the super highways, they would take average Americans out in a car, put a a, a towel over the speedometer, 
and say, tell me when you feel like you're going too fast. And about 65 or 70, people go, uh, this, feel, this is about right. I don't want to go much faster. It was always 65. Because like when I take my 63 split window Corvette out and it hits 70, I, mean, I, I feel like I'm really going fast. I mean, it's got a lot more in it, but it gets a little scary about 100 miles nowadays. Yeah, I, I see. I see guys on YouTube and challengers getting chased by the cops at 140, 150 miles an hour. I mean, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. not the speed; it's the stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. <laughs> well, that's the thing, you know. All the, the new ones. When you get a new challenger, it's got the brakes, it's got the suspension. These are great unless you want to stop or go around a corner. Okay, then you got some problems. And this one's more of a luxury cruiser. Right, it's got right. all, other than you couldn't get air conditioning, but it's got all the creature comforts in it. Another one of my favorite cars I have is a Buick GS Stage 1 Oh, that's a great one too, yeah. yeah. Total sleeper car, yeah. but it's got a ton of torque. It's sort of fast for its era. They used to call that the velvet glove and the iron fist. That's yeah. what they used to do. And it's got a four speed yeah, in it, so that. total sleeper. Well, my ad in there for the Hemi Challenger, they use the word men, like nine, it's the most sexist, ad. for men who want a real, for men who drive a real car, for the man who knows it. You know, it just, it just keeps pounding that, that thing home. You know, it's, it's for a manly car. Has this got power steering? It does, okay. power steering, power brakes, oh, you, power top. Well, you could get power steering, because in the early Hemi, you couldn't get power steering no. or power brakes. This car has you know, electric windows, yeah. electric top on oh, it. Oh, it does. It's oh, it does. I didn't notice that. Yeah. Remote mirrors. I mean, they they checked rubber front bumpers on it, rally yeah. wheels. They checked every box when they ordered this car. And it's still a good looking car. Yeah. You know, I mean, it turns heads. Can we take it for a ride? Let's take it out Let's for a spin. Let's take it for a spin. See what it does. Let's take it for a ride. Sounds good. Now this is a uh, hydraulic lifter car or solid lift, do you remember? Hydraulic. Oh, it is, okay, yeah. 727 automatic. You can turn on Super Tramp if you want. That's the eight track in it. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> it's surreal driving my car through here. There's your Hemi Challenger. Yeah. Torquey motor. You can feel it. I remember when this transmission came out in the Hemis. This is the, as least as far as I can remember, this is the first automatic that was faster than a manual. And nobody believed it in the mm -hmm. day. Well, how can it shift faster than a, than a human could? But it really did. And I mean, these things, they don't cast iron, these things take such a beating, aren't they? They're bomb proof. I, I don't know if they're still cast iron up to this point. They were in the Mid-60s, early 60s. I think this one's aluminum case. Yeah, probably aluminum, yeah. Yeah, just looking down that hood scoop. And wonderful driving car. It's got rattles and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's what you're paying for. <laughs> this is luxury performance. Yeah. This is power, but it still has that analog feel. So any any car any area cars you see come up? It seems to me cars from the '50s seem to be coming down in price now. They are, unless they're resto models. Right, right. But like the '57 Chevys for two hundred thousand dollars, that seems over now. Yes, even fueler cars. Yeah. You know, people want stuff they can drive, and you know I've sold some great muscle cars to guys that get them home and go, and they'll tell me the list of everything they don't like about it. I go car drives exactly the way it did. Yeah. You don't remember the right. way it drove. Right. You are used to driving a new car. So then they'll end up buying a resto car. I think that's why they're, you know, this it's got bias ply tires on it, no radial, so it'll want to track. Boy, you got a lot of play in that steering. Yep. It's uh, part of that forgivingness to it. Yeah. yeah. But this is when going 100 miles an hour was 100 miles an hour. It yes. really felt like you, you were You felt it. And the speedometer would be, ba, 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 and then you know, be doing this, you know, it'd be 95, 102, 96, I just laugh at it. <laughs> we average out. Yeah. You know what surprises me is how much, 
sort of what they call the Radwood cars, the 90s cars mm -hmm. are going for now because if you're a young person, that's a 30-year-old car to you. you yep. know? To me, it just seems like used cars, you know. What my dad said about these when I bought, started buying the rare muscle cars. And, you know, that's why we started the Future Collector Car Show. And, and it's a judged deal of 80s cars and up. Right. But they get extra points if they're modified with all the components back in the day. Right. Anything that has surprised you from the auction point of view, certain cars you thought, oh my God, I can't believe it went for that much or that little. The Gullwing, that we set a new record for a steel body Gullwing. I saw that. What was it, three point something? Three, one hammer, three, four with bifey. And, and what, what made that one so, was it a one owner car? Or? It's a fully restored three year restoration, took right. the body off the chassis, right. did every component. It was sent back to uh, Mercedes, be certified, uh, that it has all original components. And it was a beautiful job. And a few hundred miles of break-in and driving, I took the car out and drove it, and it drove perfect. It's a wonderful car. I mean, they always call the Mura the first supercar, and, and I love my Muras, but the Gullwing really has to be the first one. Yeah, I mean, it was... It, win races and sell basically right. the same type of car for production. And that Mercedes quality, you know, you, you can drive it all day, it doesn't overheat, and yeah. just wonderful, wonderful. Great cars. rally cars. Yeah, yeah. That one surprised me, I think, how strong the Resto mods were. Everybody thought it was a fad. But yeah. across the board, uh, we're selling Resto Mod Rolls and you can Resto Mod anything. Yeah, yeah. But the 50s cars that are Resto Modded are bringing great prices. Yeah. I bought one, not this year, a year ago, a 41 Cadillac 62 series, has an Art Morrison chassis underneath right. it, LT4. It looks totally stock. Right. But it runs and drives and stops and does everything you want. I think that's a fad that's going to continue. Yeah, yeah. Full strong. When you're slowing down, you stab it again, it'll kick down and it hits hard. Yeah. But these, these are pious flies, aren't they? They are. Yeah, you can feel it. There you go. You can see why insurance premiums are so high back in the day. Big engine, yeah. skinny tires, right. not great brakes. You got about a 60-40 weight distribution. <laughs> it's all on the front tires. Oh, God. <laughs> then I have the other end of this. I have Gurney's AAR Cuda that he raced in. I've seen you at Magoon in it. Oh, yeah? And, uh, you know, they took this as uh, Gurney's uh, team called it a taxi cab and made it a race car. And what motor's in that one? Uh, it's a 3 well, they had to be 303s, right, right. but it's a D-stroke 360. Right, right. Yeah, the exact same dashboard as my uh, Challenger. They're basically the same car. Right. Is the wheelbase the same, or is the Challenger a little longer? I think it, the, the chassis is the same, like yeah. the Camaro Firebird. Right. It's just they changed the sheet metal. Do, any, do you do any auctions out of the country? I used to do Monaco, right? And I realized I do big auctions as easy as I do small auctions, right? I don't have to get up in the middle of the night and argue with people, right? Right. Where were you yesterday? It was right. holiday. Right. It was holiday last week. Right. Where were you yesterday? It's strike again. Yeah. But you're not on strike. <laughs> so this uh, technically this wasn't a bar Barracuda anymore. It was a Hemi Cuda. That Cuda. was Cuda. They made it. Yeah, you know, I always thought that hit. was a nickname, and then they made it the name. Yep. This has fa factory discs in front. And, factory uh, drums in the back. back. Yeah, yeah. And the artificial wood steering wheel. Oh yeah, artificial everything. In <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Those era cars, the f phony wood inserts. Early adopters like. Uh, 
fiber optics to the turn signal indicators. Yeah, that's right. I do remember reading that back. Little things day. from NASA that started yeah. percolating through. It's a long time to get this motor hot, doesn't it, boy? Not in Arizona. I guess not, yeah. This car's never had overheating problems, so. though. Yeah. Huge radiator. Yeah. It's pretty docile cam and all that. Well, you see why we like Craig Jackson, because he drives his car, he uses them. They're not trailer queens. Nope. I mean, that's what makes it funny. He's a real enthusiast. Craig, thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thanks for all you do for the car business. You really sort of brought it to the limelight, to the forefront. It, I mean, it was always kind of popular, but you really kind of pushed it over the head, and over the edge, rather, and made people appreciate the value of old cars, you know? People yeah. think, oh, collecting cars, that's crazy. But thanks to you, people realize, well, you know, you can make a good living doing it if you know what you're doing. Yeah, it's it's a fun hobby. Uh, I thank you, Jay, for all the visibility you've also given to our hobby and taking your cars out and driving them. That's, well, that's what it's all fun. about. Let's see what this, it's a Hemi. Let's see what we can do. See Hit you guys it. next week. Ah!